Well, good morning. Thank you all for coming. My name is Mason Rolfe with Olympia Community Solar. I am super excited to talk to you all about my favorite subject, solar energy today. And we'll be talking about our community solar project, Sunflower. I'm joined by Brett from the Olympia Farmers Market and Kirk from South Sound Solar. And we'll be uh, talking through the project and, and how to participate. Uh, so to get started, I'd love to invite Brett to introduce himself and introduce the farmer's market. All right, thank you. Uh, as stated before, I am the operations manager for the Olympia Farmer's Market. I've been here for 2021 so far, and I'm looking forward to doing more through this season. It's a great way to kick everything off. So to get started, I wanted to talk a little bit about the history of the market, which is the next slide. First, our mission. We go through and nourish our community, support small scale local agriculture, and cultivate a healthy economy by providing a vibrant gathering place where growers, makers, and producers are empowered to offer direct access to quality goods and fresh food. So, with a lot of that titrated down, it's basically providing the community with a safe place that they can come together and uh, purchase quality items that um, emphasizes health and uh, sustainable practices for um, environmentally conscious organization. So for a brief history, this is our 46th season. Um, it started as a grassroots revival back in 1974 by Mary Town, who used $500 of her sales seed money to get the market started. They had been shifting around between Lacey and uh, Olympia for a number of years before that point. And uh, they decided they want to have it back in the area to um, have a firm standing for the Olympia Farmers Market. Its main focus was going to be in organic farming. Uh, that's a big push for even up to today is local farmers that produce a lot of high quality products in a sustainable and uh, respect responsible way. The current building that we're in right now, the pavilion, which is will be hosting the sunflower project and having the solar panels on it was built in 1996. It's located down by the port and downtown area of Olympia. And because it's on city building, it's a city building built on port property, we have a lot of relationships with the people and uh, the city officials in the area. So it's a great opportunity for us to establish ourselves and set apart as leaders in the community. And we have a lot of opportunity to do something like that. And I think this is a great way for us to pave the way um, in the future for future projects and other businesses to follow suit. We are now open year round. Uh, we'll do touch on that in the next slide. And we're also one of the only vendor owned and operated uh, farmers markets in the Washington state area. This is comes with its own difficulties, but it's a great way to have everybody very involved. The board is made up of seven members who are all vendors at the market. And it's it shows how well everybody has concern for this this community and for this market itself. And a lot of love goes into it. And it's been very apparent with my short time with the Olympia Farmers Market, how much everybody in this community and everybody at this market really cares about everybody and um, the city itself. So just to touch on our current schedule, we have our winter market, which is Saturdays only. January through March. Every market day is operated between 10 and 3 p.m. And our high season, which we are currently in now, operates between April and October, Thursday through Sunday. Our holiday market operates November through December, Saturday and Sunday. And we also have the holiday shoppers delight at the end of December, just before Christmas, so everybody can get those last minute gifts in. A few market programs that we have operating here. It's a SNAP market match. That stands for Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program. And what we do is we take EBT dollars that come to the market office, they scan in the EBT, and we match up to $40 for each customer per market day. So the power of the money, the EBT goes a little bit further and uh, doubles down essentially what you could be purchasing in other markets, which I think is a great thing to, for our community and allows a lot of people to have the opportunity to buy healthy options where they rather wouldn't be able to. Um, this is a federal grant program that also helps people lead healthy, active lives. And it, they're able to produce, purchase fresh fruits, veggies, vegetable starts, herbs, cheese, baked goods, and assortment of other things. 
for the EBT or for WIC and senior FM, FMNP. That stands for women, infants, and children, assistance in dietary and medical based conditions for the SFMNP. It's funded by both the US Department of Agriculture and the state of Washington. And that focuses on bringing fresh, healthy, unprocessed, and local fruits, vegetables, and herbs to low income seniors and WIC families in the area, which is great, especially for downtown Olympia, which has many senior service areas. And we are focusing on bringing them back to the market post this COVID 2020 situation. And uh, we're really excited to have them hosted back at the market on our senior day, which is on Thursdays throughout the high season. And for our senior days, we actually have uh, many vendors that participate in giving discounts to seniors that might be coming through the area. So if you're interested in visiting the market on a Thursday, that would be a great option, especially if you are 55 or better and are interested in you know, visiting on a slower day and making a little bit more for your bank or your buck with um, your purchases at the market. We have our online market, which was established in 2020, just to kind of circumnavigate the sales for people that were being conscious about uh, their safety. It's still in operation, so you can find different items on there. We're gonna be adding merchandise on there soon. And so you can buy your market swag and be able to promote us and uh, you know be a part of the community that loves this market so much. For our solar power and the market, first off, it's environmentally conscious. We're minimizing our carbon footprint as Mason and Kirk will go into in greater detail. This will cover 100% of our costs for operating on a daily basis, which will be huge because we can also give back to the community, which um, the less we have to spend on making this place run, the more we can invest into our programs, into our vendors, into our uh, infrastructure. And it's just gonna be a better, more comfortable place for people to come and visit and spend time. And uh, especially with our partnerships with the city and the port, if we can start developing bigger programs, we can extend ourselves out further which means it's going to be more of a benefit to the community. So every dollar that we can save and put towards that is going to be a benefit to everybody in the area. It's also an opportunity for to help us, our community progress forward. Um, as you drive downtown in Olympia, you'll see the market at the very end of Capitol Way. And it's just going to, it's just a be big, beautiful beacon at the end of the port. And I think having the solar panels in a prominent fashion as displayed in this image here, which is the old system, which we'll touch on later. Um, you can see very clearly that we are environmentally conscious, that we are pushing towards greater things, and we want to set a standard for other businesses to follow on. Um, and hopefully it becomes a, something that a lot of people take on, and um, a lot of people will view this in the 30 years to come, if not longer. This also ties into our strategic plan, which is to educate and inspire our community to embrace sustainable practices. We're always looking to do things better. We're always looking to find new vendors that are doing things correctly, that aren't cutting corners. And that's a firm belief at the Olympia Farmers Market that we can keep putting in the work, um, do things that make sense and that are a benefit to everybody in the area. Cheers, thank you so much, Brett. Um, can, I, can I ask you a question? Do you know about how many people visit the market? Um, uh, Approximately 400,000 people per year. Wow. So uh, an opportunity to teach all of those folks a little bit about clean energy. Um, it's really exciting. Um, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for talking about the, the market. We'll circle back around with questions at the end. Uh, but to introduce the, the solar project, I want to uh, bring on Mr. Kirk Hafner, the founder and owner of South Sound Solar, and I'll let Kirk introduce South Sound Solar. Oops. There we go, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, thank you. Yeah, South Sound Solar uh, was conceived in 2007. We officially started in 2008, and we've been serving the Thurston County and, and surrounding counties now. We're in our 14th year. And our mission is to educate citizens and communities and encourage them to change the, the way they think about energy and empower them to be clean energy consumers. And through our outreach product services, we benefit your economy and, and our environment. 
Um, we are a full service uh, solar installer. We do both residential and commercial. In that slide, that's a picture of an install we did on Providence Centralia Hospital. Um, and my background is a picture of an install we did on Tonino High School uh, by winning grants. Um, but we are a general electrical contractor serving this area and very proud and humbled uh, to be selected to be putting solar back on the farmer's market again. Next slide. So we have uh, selected the Silfab panel, which is made in Washington state. It's made white in Bellingham and it is a very high efficiency panel and what it does is for people that are familiar with the old solar panels, you used to have the trace lines on the front of the panel. And those trace lines reflected light and reduced the surface area of how much light could hit the solar cell. With this Silfab new elite panel, they have the trace lines literally on the back of the panel. And as a result of that, you've got much better uh, much more surface area and surface area increases anywhere between five and 10% for absorption. The cells are closer together. So we have a very highly efficient panel in a compact frame. And with that, uh, one of the other things that happens with these panels is they just have better performance. Um, they perform better in lower light levels. They perform better in higher temperatures, which we're gonna see in the next few days. And, and then we just think they look really nice. They're with the all black, it's a sleek and aesthetic panel. Next slide. And the inverter that works best for this project is the Solar Edge uh, inverter. And the reason why we selected Solar Edge, one primarily is safety. Um, solar installations now have to have a process called rapid shutdown that if there's any type of fluctuation in the grid or any type of emergency, the system can shut down just like that. And so that's what we've got. We've also got limitations in the electrical infrastructure at the farmer's market. And this, this system um, will, oops, this system will uh, map right in to that electrical infrastructure. The other really nice thing about Solar Edge is each panel has a little device on it it's called an optimizer. And with that optimizer, we can actually see the performance of every single individual panel to monitor the performance of the system. And there will be a public display, if you will, of the, um, of the performance of the system that could be on display at the farmer's market as well. So the size of the system, the plan is that we can get 198 panels on the roof, which if you multiply 198 times 380 watts per panel, that's a standard system size of 75.2 kilowatts, which is a good size system. Now with a farmer's market or with any building, you don't want to oversize the system. You know, you can take their bill to zero, but you can't take it to negative numbers. Um, there's no reimbursement if you are producing more electricity than the farmer's market uses. So Olympia Community Solar did a really good job working with the farmer's market team to collect data on the consumption at the farmer's market. Now, of course, with the 2020 COVID crisis, consumption dropped a little bit. So we went back a few more years. And the idea with this system is that it can potentially produce 100% of the farmer's market electric bill. Kirk, do you know of any other farmers markets around Washington that have installed solar? Not, not right offhand. I do not. Um, I, I would hope <laughs> and assume there are some. I know we did talk with uh, Centralia at one point about their little farmers market, um, but you know, at the same time, our Olympia farmers market is unique. I, I do, you know. I'll speak for Brad. I think we have one of the best farmers markets, if not in Washington state, easily on the West Coast. I think there's a high, high chance that this could be the only vendor owned net zero farmers market in Washington, if not a larger area than that. So super yeah. exciting. 
Um, well, I'm going to loop back to you for questions at the end. Thank you so much for talking about the system. And now we're going to speak about the community aspect about it, uh, of, of the project and, and how uh, it's accessible to anyone who wants to join in or donate. Um, our, uh, our team at Olympia Community Solar, we're, we're a nonprofit that focuses on uh, access to clean energy. Our mission is to steward an e equitable and accessible transition to clean energy using community solar. Uh, down on the lower left here, you can see installers on the roof of the Children's Museum. This is our first community solar project, Hummingbird. It was installed earlier this year, and we ended up having 83 private owners and 14 different nonprofits all own pieces of that system. I'll show you a cool graphic of how it works. And then we also run programs such as uh, uh, raising money for solar education materials for uh, Washington prisons. We uh, fund low-income solar installations through grant writing. So we're really hoping to uh, expand solar access to the folks who have traditionally been left out, which is at this point pretty much everyone except for uh, homeowners who can afford solar. So it's a pretty big portion of our population. Uh, so let me talk about uh, community solar. So this is how the ownership of the Children's Museum ended up. Uh, all 14 of these nonprofits opened up their uh, membership and encouraged their membership to donate solar units to them. And then 83 different community members decided to purchase uh, solar units for themselves. And so every year we will be sending them uh, payment for how much energy their portion of the system produces. And I'll just say it's been really amazing to partner with the Children's Museum. It's also an awesome educational opportunity for all the kids that visit the museum. Uh, so just like this system, we're setting up sunflower uh, on the farmer's market to uh, be the same community owned style. Uh, so here's a rendering of the, of the South Sound Solar designed beautiful system here. We've got panels on all the south facing uh, wings of the market. And then right here at the very front of the market, there's some east and west facing panels. Uh, in total, uh, 198. So our team took those 198 panels and we split them up into a little bit more than 400 solar units. So each solar, solar unit represents about half of a solar panel. And let me talk about how participation works. So we've already sold a bunch of the units. Um, there are 378 left and they each cost $300. Our goal is to enroll all those units by August 1st and have the system installed later in the year. And if someone comes and they pay $300 for a unit, uh, for the first year, they'll just be generating energy. But at the end of that first year, we'll send them a payment. Our estimate is $14 in the first year. Uh, and we'll keep doing that every year uh, until we pay you back with a 2% return. And that we estimate to take 16 to 18 years based on how energy prices change. And after all those participants are paid back with their return, then Sunflower is going to be donated to the farmer's market in perpetuity. And uh, the, the warranties on the system, the shortest warranty is I think 25 years for the panels. So at very least they'll get, um, you know, seven or eight years of, of free energy from the system, if not much longer, because here in our temperate climate, those panels can produce for a while longer than 25 years. Um, and if, if folks aren't interested in, you know, having a decade longer subscription to a, a solar unit, they can also choose to donate a unit. Uh, and we have some wonderful Non, not for profits that have signed up for this system. And donations are tax deductible. And if you donate a unit, then the nonprofit of your choosing will receive the, that $14 a year 
for the lifetime of the project. And uh, we're encouraging folks to support the Friends of the Farmers Market, which is the nonprofit associated with the market, or any of these awesome other nonprofits that are providing services to our community. Everything from Salmon Defense, which is a tribal led organization protecting our waterways, to Homes First, which supports low income customers in rental housing, uh, to a Grub, which is a teaching garden for local children. So, regardless of which nonprofit you choose to support, um, it'll help fund the system and provide that nonprofit with long term support from that solar revenue. So participation is one way, and that's you owning your unit for yourself and receiving the dividend or donation is the other way. And then the nonprofit receives the, the annual solar payments. And finally, we're dedicating this system to Mr. S Steve Wilcox. Steve uh, was one of the original market vendors and a founder of the Friends of the Farmers Market. He vended, vended at the market for decades and is a well-known name. The little stage area at the market, uh, which is now a, like a little picnic area, is also dedicated to Steve. Uh, and yeah, he was the um, uh, the really the champion and mastermind behind the original solar installation on the market. And he managed that system while it was installed for several years. Um, and so, uh, yeah, the other piece I want to mention around Steve is that when our team were originally trying to set up our first community solar project at the Children's Museum, we approached the, the Friends of the Farmers Market and Steve, and they provided us with a bunch of the legal documents that they had used in their original system. And so really Hummingbird in part is thanks to the contributions of Steve's work. So we have a lot to thank him for and uh, we're dedicating the system to Steve and uh, donations in Steve's honor should be made to the Friends of the Farmers Market to continue that legacy. Um, so with that, I'm going to just show our contact information, the enrollment is up on our webpage at olisoul.org forward slash sunflower uh, and yeah we hope we hope you, you join in and be part of this community project uh, so with that i'm going to open it up to any questions and uh, and welcome our panelists to provide final thoughts yeah kirk hey, if i could add um, i had the pleasure of working with steve over 10 years ago uh, Steve has waterfront property just a few miles from my place and he was looking at solar and he had too many trees around and he approached South Sound Solar about doing the original feasibility study on the farmers market and I was just amazed at his drive and tenacity. Um, you know, I was a little skeptical. How is this nonprofit and these friends going to come together and do this and you know he definitely made it happen. Uh, another interesting little history on that older system, uh, the original design was, was our design and Sunset Air, a local uh, vendor, is the company that actually did the first design. So we're coming full circle again with this project and we're very excited uh, about participating again and, and putting a, a new system on the market. And Mason, you mentioned one thing too that I want to add. The new Silfab panel, because of its new architecture, um, it actually has a 30-year uh, product warranty. Systems will the panels will produce at 83% or better even after 30 years, and and typical, you know, lifespan on a panel like that is 40 years, is what they say before it becomes kind of obsolete or there's new technology that could really replace it cost effectively. So. Hopefully, yeah, we get uh, a long, a long life out of this system on the market. So at least a decade, if not two, of of donated energy for the market. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, well, can I invite any questions, any comments from from our viewers? Uh, yeah, John. 
uh, you're you're on mute, so you'll want to. Yeah, there you go. Chime in here, and this is actually a question for Brett. Um, Brett, what is the uh, what is the energy consumption of the uh, farmers market annually, and um, how is it paid for now? Is it being taken out of stall rents, or how, how does that work? Yeah, so right now we're sitting between 75 and 79,000, which was uh, listed in Kirk's, one of Kirk's slides. And it's funded mostly through vendor fees. So the percentage that's um, taken from their sales and um, the amount of space they take up in the market, that's where the money comes from. So if, um, if we're eliminating the electric costs, um, donated panels, like how does that work for you, for the farmer's market? And I didn't see the farmer's market as one of the uh, organizations you can donate. Is that one of them, Mace? Uh, so the market itself isn't a nonprofit, but they have the Friends of the Farmer's Market, which is kind of their nonprofit arm. And yeah, they're definitely a, a participant. Um, so the during the community solar portion of the project's lifetime, the market will purchase the energy from the solar array at the same rate they paid the utility. And then it's on our nonprofit's responsibility to distribute that money out to all the participants and nonprofits that have received donations, uh, including you know, the market itself. Um, and then, uh, yeah, once we get to the end of that participation term, then the entire ownership of the project gets turned over to the market. Uh, the really the goal here is to find a way to fund a you know hundred thousand dollar plus solar array without any upfront cost to the market itself, and so we're going to do that through community participation and crowdfunding. Yeah. Any other questions? You know, one thing, I'll, I'll chime in again. I noticed from uh, Hummingbird that uh, the bulk of the panels that were donated to any one organization were to the Children's Museum. And I'm wondering if being a host, uh, being a nonprofit host of the solar project uh, actually benefits you <laughs> to, be able to, to donate the panels to you. Twice. Yeah, uh, the Children's Museum were the largest recipient of donations in the, the Hummingbird Project. They're also the single largest owner of the system. I think, uh, I think 64 units, I think they had 64 units of that project. And so, yeah, our hope is, is similarly that um, the Friends of the Farmer's Market will uh, receive a, 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 the largest share of sunflower um, and provide long-term support to the friends. Um, the, the, I don't know, uh, Brett, do you feel confident in talking a little bit about the work that the Friends of the Market have done uh, and what sort of projects they, how they contribute to the market? Yeah, so what the Friends of the Farmers Market typically does is they look at the interest of what would benefit the community and not the market necessarily itself. It's so it, it's not to generate anything that's going to be you know taking money from people that would be donating and using it so that it'd be mostly for our benefit. It's got to be a benefit to the people that are attending, to the vendors, the people that are going to be utilizing the market. And so it's based around um, what what would be the best for the people in the area. So things like the stage area, which was used for music, which hopefully we'll have live music back in the next couple of weeks, um, an area to kind of host people for events, um, doing all the brick laying inside the market, uh, fixing the fascia and um, roof cleaning and stuff, and even going towards doing big repairs like kitchen updates or something that we can use for um, the vendors to be able to, you know, put their stuff inside, 
to be able to use the kitchen and provide for the people that are going to be visiting us at the market. So it's less based around the individuals at the market, but the people that are going to be attending us. Very cool. Uh, well, unless I, I see any other questions come up, I think we will call it there. Um, this, if you want to see the slides or the webinar, we'll post this recording on our social media, which is listed here at Olympia Solar, uh, or check out our partners page. The farmer's market has a beautiful social media account with cool vendor photos every day. Uh, South Sound Solar just posted an awesome video about skydive Kapausen and the solar array that they installed out on that skydiving uh, uh, business. Uh, and yeah, thank you all for coming and learning a little bit about community solar. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.